If you, if you do plan on playing this, please, for the love of the gods, bail now. And do not get spoiled for anything. This, this is a game that is far better the less you know about it, if you're going to play it. That goes for no matter who you are. You are. Okay. Put bindings in reset. If you want to play this, don't watch anyone else play it first. It will have a huge impact on your ability to enjoy it. Take care, uh, Dick Bear. Outer Wilds. <laughs> it's a long ass pause. But thank you once again for hanging out, everyone. Um, let me make sure. Okay, we are Outer Wilds. Edit stream information. So it's, it's actually one of the few um, first session on the DLC. That's right. It's it's one of the few games I've actually bothered to put on YouTube. So I do actually have my uh, my original playthrough of Outer Wilds now on YouTube under uh, Physicist Plays Outer Wilds, I think was, was what I went with. But uh, this is my very first session with it. Now, I did read one thing. The only thing I know about the game is where I can start, where I can go to see some of the new information related to uh, the DLC. So this is exactly how it starts every time. Standing in front of this campfire. Here's a dude. Just because it's been a little while, we'll, we will roast some marshmallows. Hold on. Oh, fuck. You know what? Feed it. It's good enough. Okay. And with that, let us ascend. Oh, wait, wait. No, no, we go back. We go back. Like I said, some of the, the little information that I got ahead of time about the DLC is that I can go to the observatory and get some brand new information that did not exist before. Carbonated pustule. Wait, what is this? Physicist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Mal dropped a, a link to the to the YouTube channel, but... That's, uh... That's terrible, Paradoxica. I, I hate it. Thank you. <laughs> Let's remind ourselves how, uh, how the actual control goes. Okay. Oh, look at this. Oh, fuck. Wait, try one more time, one more time. We're gonna land this in there. Perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay. Where we need to go now is the observatory, which is gonna have some information about new phenomena that we need to investigate. So this picks up where we left off. So we finished the uh, the base game of Outer Wilds. Uh, uh, it's about a year ago. Um, it was really incredible. Definitely recommend it to anyone who likes sort of puzzly games. But the uh, the premise with this one is you're learning more about the physics system. Specifically, I'd say the uh, the quantum the impl. <laughs> Interpretation of quantum quantum mechanics for this game and that that drives a lot of the mechanics forward But we are going to start off knowing all of that this time because we're just looking at the new DLC Oop, Okay All right, so people who have not seen the original game uh have stepped away. So it started off with this statue, the statue making eye contact with us and effectively memorizing <laughs> our, well, not memorizing, but like uh, downloading our brain, which it will then upload to us on each cycle so that it can, uh, it can actually complete this, this cycle that we've, uh, we've been going through. It's supposed to be a new exhibit here. New exhibit? 
Oh, look at that, look at that. So there's now a new object that is orbiting non-planar with the, uh, the, solar, the, uh, the solar system. So ordinarily, all stars, all, all bodies that are orbiting a star are, are doing so in, a, uh, in the same plane because they actually form out of a single uh, planetary nebula. But sometimes you get uh, capture events like this where something is, is definitely not coplanar. What is that, Mal? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had to upload that, that clip to YouTube um, because it got silenced by, uh, by Twitch. And obviously, audio is kind of important. So it looks like there's, there's a new object, a, a captured object that is, at, that is perpendicular to the planar orbit of the planets. A radio tower here on Timber Hearth was built to receive transmissions from our deep space satellite and to this day still houses the first ever photos taken of the entire solar system. These photos were made possible by the uh, deep space satellite's unusual vertical orbit that carries it high above and below the plane of the solar system. Thanks to a recent upgrade, the deep space satellite is now responsible for generating the real-time solar system map used by our newest astronauts. Oh, interesting. Just as a reminder, this is the interpretation of quantum mechanics by the game. I get it. It's it's a good gamification of how it works. Hey, was it Zade Oak? How's it going, dude? Um, so if you're not looking at something, wait, actually, I need to do this. It's gone. Where is it? Oh, it's over there now. What if I do this? And then I turn to look. Oh, wait, it's over here. What about over here? Oh, it is there. But there's nothing here, right? Oh, no, it is there. But it's gone from these places. This is exactly how quantum mechanics works in this game. Satellite has to be booking it. It's going pretty fast. Though velocity determines orbit, you can actually with precise measurement of the ellipse that a body is traveling, you can determine its velocity at every point in space. One-to-one -one correlation. Given a position and a velocity, you can determine the entire orbit and vice versa. But that is the new part. Let me see. This is, these are the gravity crystals. These will have a uh, impact on our ability to traverse the environment. Break out the chalkboard. Hey, look at this, the statue opened his eyes. I bet you wish you'd seen that happen, huh? Me too. I'm not even a little closer to understanding what's going on with the statue. No thanks, I'm good. Okay, so we have previously won. We did beat this game with the uh, when it was just the core game, which was about a year ago. And again, I think once I finish this DLC, I'll package this up as a single uh, another YouTube video and, and throw that up there as well. So it'll join the uh, three existing videos, which were three separate streams uh, from. <laughs> A long ass time ago. All right, I think we're ready though. This gives me an idea of where to go. I want to check out to see if I can intercept that uh, satellite that was put into orbit uh, perpendicular to all of all of the uh, the planets. Okay. So let's take off and see where we are. Okay, here's our planet, here's the sun. Here are the Amber Twins. Okay, let me see, where is our signal scope? So what about perpendicular signals? What if I did this? Whoa, wait, hold on, who is this? Oh, that's, okay. <sighs> Quantum fluctuations. Hmm. 
How do I go about finding this asshole? So where, what is the plane of the planets? Okay, this, this has got to be the plane, so. Hmm. Wait, what is... The fuck is this? Okay, hold A to match velocities. Gonna need that. Okay, what is this? Is another task agent on YouTube? That seems unlikely, Mal. It could be it could be me from before I was had things set up the way I currently do. That would be my my guess. Minecraft? No? Okay, so maybe there is. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, awesome. We're closing the gap. Hold on. Three, two, one, zero. So this has got to be our satellite, right? Fuck. No. You're up here. Okay. Hold on. We can get closer. Oh, this is frustrating. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. A little bit closer. So, Russian? Okay. There, there is a different task agent on YouTube, then. I would agree with that statement. Okay. What is my... Okay. okay. Let's try to get closer. What are we looking at? I don't exactly know, uh, Wispel, or Omegard. My my understanding is, all I heard was that, like, all I had to do was go to the um, uh, museum and I could get started on the, news, the new content. And I think this is part of it. <laughs> Not what I meant to do, but that's fine. There's nothing so far exciting about this. Wait, what is this? Ah, what are you? We have a recording. Gabbro here, checking in on the deep space satellite per ground control's request to check out a possible equipment problem. Seahorns, fells, I did too work. You know, I wouldn't mind being a satellite. It's peaceful out here among the uh, the distant stars and the soft, velvety darkness. Bet it's... yawn. Awfully nice for naps, too. Oh, right, the lens. All right, little satellite, let's see what the trouble is. Hmm. Everything looks A-OK, -okay, ground control. No dust or scratches on the lens, and no evidence of, a, of sparkling or sparking or violent explosions. Guess that rules out an equipment malfunction after all. 
Heard this game is wild. This game is incredible, Darker Nine. I love it. Hear that, pal? You're in great shape. Keep up the good work out here. Unironically, if you ever want to play this game, Darker Nine, you should run away now. Because the less you know about the game, the better uh, when it comes to playing it. It is a physics ish, is like physics ish based puzzle game, I would say. Where you are piecing together both the events of what happened here, but also how the system works in order to better understand it. So this is the book I just read, right? Are there any... Hold on, let me... There we go. Okay. So where, it says unidentified signal nearby. Why is it still unidentified? I promise that I'll forget everything that I see while watching this game. If not, I prom I still promise that, uh, that but you'll have no way of knowing if I'm telling the truth okay I'm just saying it for your benefit if it seems like a game you might like then all of the joy is in ascertaining what the fuck is going on okay let me put that away Wait, hold on Photo mode, photo mode, sure. Let me get the fuck back into my ship. I have only a little bit of oxygen left, and I honestly, I did not start a timer, so I don't know how much time I have left. Hold on. Appricating? Couch. Window. The cat lay appricating on the back of the <laughs> couch. Near I appreciate I appreciate the the, uh, the thought, Dark Nine, but uh, I I worry that that's not actually the case. Okay, let's see. Where's the satellite? Okay, all of those are identified. Okay, so it looks like there's not any, any new planets. May maybe I give your brain too much credit. I think you don't give your brain enough credit. But honestly, hearing hearing the rationale that someone else comes to about about their understanding of how the game works is is frequently enough to like uh, subvert some of the points of the game. That being said, you are invited to do as you find most enjoyable. I think it's any of these. I don't understand. Oh, unknown. Unknown? Hold on. That's new. There shouldn't be any unknown signals.
All right, we have we have a direction. Have a great night, Mal. <laughs> you <laughs> immediately went back for New Game Plus. And had no idea where to go. I get that. I get that. I would say it's not the same thing. The reason it's not the same thing is that progress in Dark Souls isn't gated by information. This game is. This game, your progress through it is gated by your understanding of how things work. And... The better you understand how they work, the uh, farther you are through the game. This is new. This is not familiar to me. Hold on. Okay, I spent far too long accelerating and now I'm still I'm still decelerating. There we go. But right now we are playing through the DLC. So this is all sort of post-game extra stuff. I think the DLC integrates into the main game in a way that you're not left like, um, it's it's not post-game, it's like mid-game DLC. So things that you would encounter through the game if you were playing normally. There we go. Beautiful. We'll lock onto this. Okay, what the fuck are you? I don't have my scope out still, so let's just get close, identify the signal. Okay, you know what, this is fine. Velocity match, let's go out and see. So right now I'm uh, just using my jetpacks. It gives us a lot less control, it's a lot slower, but it lets us get nice, nice and close. I'm trying to understand what this is. So I know what this surface is. This is a something that I can actually walk on. There we go. So these are gravitational surfaces that like have fake gravity, fake local gravity to let you physically walk on the surface. That's... Oh, fuck. Whoa! DLC, hi, hi. <laughs> How's it going, Nick, dude? Yeah, just started the DLC. Okay. And... Dude, eight months. That number is incredible to me. I saw it earlier today as well, and I just can't believe that I've tricked some assholes into sticking around for eight months. I appreciate every moment of that, and I don't understand it, but I love you all anyway. Oh God. I was about to say, I think I'm about to die. And I, I'm dead. Let's let the uh, the machinery reinstall all of our new memories into our body right before the event started. And we can set right out. Have you played this one yet, Nick, dude? Or is this all new to you? Only played a couple hours? Nice. It's nice to hear it's more than just a couple hours of, uh, of content. What is content? That's a great question. I wish I knew. Unfortunately, I have nothing to report.
And just because I'm going to forget, let me put on my suit. Let's buckle up. Let's launch, and then we'll immediately pull out our scope and look for... I don't think Outer Wild Ventures. <gasps> Is it a puppy raid? Oh my gods, it's a puppy raid. Hold on. Hold on. Hi, Pucklet. Frog. Oh, come here. Come here. Yes. Oh, good girl. Hi. How are you? Here, Rufflet, hop up. Hop up. You got it. Oh, good girl. Let me just fix this. Mm. There we go. Hi. How are you? Oh. Let me... Ah. Hi. Let me kiss. Kiss. Ears. You, you want to go for the ears? Yeah. She's usually very ears motivated. Very ears. Good girl, Rufflet. Oh. This is giant snuffleupagus. This is Rufflet. She's adorable. I see my camera's very askew, but I can't really do anything about it. Hi. Come here. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. No. No. <laughs> oh, there you go. Good girl. Oh, she's done. She's tired. It's like, I just want to hop up, but that's it. No more. Okay, Rufflet, I love you. Have a great night, sweetie. That's what you call me, not her. <laughs> I don't like that at I'm all. sorry, sweetie. I hate, I'm leaving. <laughs> Go to mommy. Uh, Big disgust. Manatees points out that I, I accidentally called the dog a nickname I use for her. Hmm. Imagine content. Okay. Yeah, let me uh, regain focus. Okay. All right, where is... Okay, you know what? Let's look at... Yeah, I'll come take a night in a moment. Troy, Troy, come here. Come here, Trogdor. No, no, okay, never mind. Trogdor does not want to come say goodnight. That bitch. Okay. I wanted to... So that's a quantum moon. We understand everything about that. White hole... Where? Where does it actually let me access? It doesn't. Okay, that's cool. Hold on. It's got to be a better a better means of accessing the satellite that we just found. Do I just have to like point around at? fucking space like an idiot until I find it. it. Might be the only red thing in space, maybe. Okay, let me pull that back. Okay. Okay, there we go. Pull this back out. Okay, so right now we're just free floating around the star. We've... I don't, I don't know if we've decoupled from our starting planet. It doesn't actually matter. Because I'm really just looking for the red light out in space. That indicates the satellite that we were just following.
Oh, I see. That's what holding down does. If I hold left... Oh, okay, okay. I get it. Let's me spin. It's fine. Hmm. See, now I'm just like pointing my myself fucking aimlessly out into space, hoping that I see something that seems out of place. Could have been behind this planet, but that seems unlikely. There's the starting planet's moon. It's the Ember Twins. There's the comet. That's Brittle Hollow. There's the Quantum Moon. There's the fucking plague that's infesting the galaxy. Awesome. But where? Where, oh where? Is our perpendicular friend. Okay, let's see. Hold. Okay, that's not what I want. Hold left bumper. This is the, the plane of the orbit of most planets, more or less. This is perpendicular to it. Okay, what is this? Is there an associated quantum fluctuation? Museum, cave shard, quantum moon. Island shard. There was a quantum fluctuation associated with the, uh... Ah, there it is. Okay. Let's go this way. Eighteen. There we go. Now it's dropping. Okay, I may need to start the next run off with uh, quantum fluctuation as my uh, starting target. Oh, there's, there's two unknown quantum fluctuations here. Okay, well that is novel. Yeah, well, so it's it's specifically associated with weird shit. Let's get a little bit closer. Sun, not actually unknown. The unknown signals are all things that haven't been adequately explored. There. For some reason it won't let me target it. I wonder if there's something on these planets now that's new. But the, 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 there were special quantum signals that we could see before associated with like significant quantum events in this uh, system. Okay, let's see. Try to close back in. It still won't let me target it, so... Okay, there's something on this moon. That's good. Let's start there. Some quantum event on this moon. 
Okay, we haven't matched velocities with this moon, though. I formally convey my presence. Yeah, hey, hey, Echo, how's it going? Okay. So, probably something of interest is in one of these volcanoes. There was only a little bit in the base game before the DLC was added. Imposter. Makes it a little challenging because it won't actually target this, this planet. <laughs> okay, what else we got? That's not the volcano. That's not the volcano. Literally, this moon gets like smaller as time goes on through the uh, the cycle. The lava level drops, and we can actually see some stuff of interest in some of these volcanoes. Wait, hold on. Did I see something here? Was I was I wrong? Oh gods. I want to target you. So yesterday my hand slipped and I accidentally made a loaf of bread. And today my hand slipped again and I ended up with flour tortillas. You're excited to see my reaction to the first thing? Well, I hope I can find it for you, Nick, dude. Fuck, why is this not targeting this fucking planet? Right? Left. I'm pressing the left joystick in. It should fucking do it. I think... I wonder if they introduced a bug with respect to... Uh, Some of the controls, because I'm not actually able to select the uh, this moon for for velocity matching. Let's try this. Okay. Hey, so the DLC's going all right. I worry that maybe some of the controls were disrupted. Yeah, L3 L3 is doing nothing for me right now. Like, it was able to select the moon, or the sun, but I'm pressing it like... Nothing's changing. How do I... Okay, right trigger. Lock on. Okay, now it works. Randomly having some loops? Okay. Th thanks for letting me know, Sprat Hacks. Okay. It looks like it was solvable by re-entering the menu. Hold on, I'm just gonna let myself get absorbed by the ass by the uh, lava and start again. Not gonna lie, I spent like 90% of that loop like pressing L3, waiting for it to lock on. How far am I? All I've seen is the museum so far. 
I've been to the uh, the satellite that's perpendicular to the orbit of the planets, so that's that's not coplanar with all the planets. So I've been to that, um, and that's it. Yeah, it, it is. It is still in place. So, so we're still driven by the same sort of timing timing parameters as the base game. That time, I would say all of my my difficulties were driven by controls being uh, wrong. Something locked down L three, and it was not triggering. Okay, but but now we know. Okay, here we go. We're gonna find Brittle Hollow. Here it is. No, that's not it. That's the moon. Where's Brittle Hollow? The plane of the planets. There it is. There's Hollow's Lantern. Got a match velocity with it. More or less. Okay, we'll jet towards it now. I wanna take a look at it once I get close. The plan for now is to uh, look at some of the unknown quantum signatures. So there's several several quantum signatures with a signal scope that are unknown. One of them was on Hollow's Lantern. Well, maybe not anymore. There was... I swear there was previously one on, on Hollow's Lantern, but maybe, maybe its position is inconsistent. Okay. Let's just, uh, do. Easy peasy. That's beautiful. Beautiful landing. I have... Okay, I do. Uh, just in case. Just repair. Cool. Okay, so we have an unknown... Talks. How are the misadventures in space going? <laughs> misadventures in space? It feels strangely apropos. Geeks out on physics. Honestly, a whole lot makes me like rage at physics instead of geeking out. Well, this is this whole area is new, I think. Translate right bumper. Plume. Felix, uh, Felix and I have determined this atypical shard of rock is the reason the objects in this grove are behaving in a quantum manner. Of note, a unique signal is coming from this shard. Curiously, our friend, the wandering moon, sounds the same. The only other object we've observed displaying this quantum behavior is the wavering or the wandering moon. I imagine the moon's behavior in this groves are related. In her note from earlier, Felix mentioned this strange type of rock isn't found elsewhere on Brittle Hollow. What if it isn't originally from this planet? Hypothesis, this quantum shard is from the wandering quantum moon. Perhaps it is even a small piece of the moon itself. I've also heard the same signal this shard produces calling out from Giant's Deep, Timber Hearth, and the Hourglass Twins. Suppose there are other shards like this one. Okay. So this one probably moves. I don't know if there's any more of these. Beneath your feet lies the Tower of Quantum Knowledge. If you are preparing to make your first pilgrimage to the Quantum Moon, descend the steps to the entrance below. The knowledge held within will help you on your journey. So this is a new Tower of Quantum Knowledge. At least, I don't know if, it, if they've rearranged existing stuff or if this is brand new, but 
The trees are moving. The trees in this grove wander about freely. The entire planet roots and all. This is not normal, even for uh, this alien planet. And I've never seen them move. Is that even possible? If anyone else uh, witnesses this disturbing behavior, I implore you, record your observations here. Either these trees are aberrant or my brain must be. The uh, plume is right. The trees do move. I confess I didn't notice until I read his notes. Alarmingly, this isn't, it isn't only the trees. There's other matter, matter in the area, such as the unusual shard of rock. Moving in this area... Uh, uh, moving... Uh, moving in the same eerie way. That rock is unusual for another reason, too. Thatch. It possesses color and texture I've never seen elsewhere on this planet. Hypothesis. This rock shard, shard's presence is significant. We should study it. Could it be what is causing the other nearby objects to also move? move? Yeah, okay. So we all already know that the quantum moon is what gives what creates this strange matter that that moves in this particular way how do we enter this tower though well okay this is brittle hollow a particular thing of note with brittle hollow is that it is fucking falling apart and we can go underneath and enter from the underside but it sounds like there's going to be new quantum stuff on several of the planets. Shards of, of the quantum moon, in effect. But yeah, Echo, my uh, misadventures in space are going really well. Insofar as we just started. I do owe my wife a visit in just a few minutes to, uh, oh shit, say goodnight. But first. <laughs> so I think these are from the uh, original game. But... If my memory serves me correctly, there should be a tunnel. A, uh... Some sort of tube that brings us straight inside the planet from here. Hmm. And again, I will take some very slight efforts to uh, to not directly correlate what some of what I'm seeing with with stuff I've seen before. But uh, the comet, for example. Okay, it looks like the uh, entrance to deeper is not over here, but exists elsewhere. Hmm. Ooh, yes. Okay. This. Here. Wait, no, you're coming out. Anything going down? That's where I'd go down. Okay, fuck. Okay, no good. Fuel level critical. That's not great. Once we actually run out of fuel, we'll start burning oxygen for fuel. And it's a much less effective fuel, too. Here we go. No. Hold on. We got this. Ugh. Fuck you, black hole. I think we're hosed. We'll just pop out the, bla the black hole into the... Or pop into the black hole and out the white hole. 
which is consistent with the particular formulation of general relativity, though it is not generally thought to be actually how black holes behave. There we go. And I'm dead. Wonderful. Let me see. I will need just a moment to go and say good night to the wife. Let me just pop back into the game. And this is a recap of everything we experienced until We arrive at the beginning of a run. Okay, I'll be back in just a few moments. Everyone, hold tight. See you in a bit. All right, we're back. Let's see. Do. All right. But I've actually had the time of running on this run, so let's uh, reset the loop. So we can start again fresh. <laughs> let's see. Let's see what our view looked like this uh, last run. Oh gods! Here's all our memories. Here we go. Oh gods, let's go. Okay. Oh gods, let's go. <laughs> so there's supposed to be a new quantum thing on Timber Hearth. So why don't we actually start there? That may actually be... Oh. Gods, let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Omagard. Whoa, shit. Go, go, go. No. Ho, ho. That's right. Fuck you. Okay. We managed to uh, not take any damage, and that is okay by me. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. Did we... Oh, we didn't take any damage that time either. You know what? That is okay. How about we actually get ourselves the fuck away from here? What is this? One of these things. There were like three... Okay. Okay. None of them were significant. All right. Guess there's a unknown quantum shard over here. <laughs> Anything? Nothing over here now. All right. So I need to find my way inside. Oh, there's fucking stairs here. Well, that's a whole lot easier than I fucking thought. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You know what? Whatever, doesn't matter. Suit up and go outside. Wait, is there... Sorry, there was a text task, you're right. Depart. Celestial. Deities. Oh, celestial. Deities. Let. Us. Depart. That's why I didn't play. <laughs> thank, thank you for pointing that out. I, uh, I slightly overlooked that.
So what is this? Entrance of the Qua Tower of Quantum Knowledge to the Southern Observatory. Okay. Where is our entrance? Whoa. Okay, hold up. That is jump. No, 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 this is not fair. I'm alive. Nothing matters. I'm alive. Wait. Gonna pass through, it passes through us a little bit. A little bit. I think uh, this is not gonna let me go up here. Yeah, no, the, the gravity on this planet is too strong. It's even stronger than our starting starting territory. So no, we have been in here. We've been to this Tower of Quantum Knowledge. I think the... Hell, maybe the, the stuff at the top actually I have seen before. Let's see. Yeah, 1.4 times gravity. It's a little rough on the body. I would agree with that. So we have been in here. And so we can take pictures of the inside. Though, um, it's not quite as appealing as it sounds. Alright. So, I think then... This thing... Must be something I've already... Already used. To its fullest. I just... Either it lost track of the stuff that I've already previously identified. There we go, Tower Shard. Okay. Maybe they slightly iterated on how some of that stuff works. But we've been through that Tower of Quantum Knowledge at some point. Basically, you, you wait on the bottom until it sh shunts through the black hole. And then out in the uh, absence or the uh, void of space, you can easily travel up and read uh, what information there is to gather there. So that's not what we're looking for. What else do we have? Any other unidentified signals? Okay, hey, what the fuck is this? Oh, that's a big ass rock. I got my answer. Okay, quantum fluctuations, nothing of interest. If I spin around, oh shit. Anything of interest now? No. I find Giant Steep really scary. Honestly, actually, Giant's Deep was probably the least scary for me, but I understand why other people were more upset by it. If you have any sort of issues with, with thalassophobia, Giant's Deep is probably going to be pretty unnerving. I, I, I rather enjoyed it, but uh, it was the least stressful planet to, uh, to travel to here. Let, let me show you why. If anyone doesn't know anything about Giant's Deep, this is how you can approach it every time. You're like, oh, I want to go to Giant's Deep. Well, let's just do it this way. Subnautica traumatized you. <laughs> Understandable. Subnautica was a very traumatic game. 
Okay. Right now I'm traveling, I'm accelerating towards Giant Steep. This is how you can always travel to Giant Steep. Every time, no problem. You need to go there, great. Accelerate full speed. Go as fast as you want, it does not matter. You'll almost always be fine. There you go. And look at that. That's This is why it didn't traumatize me. Almost always. There's a few tiny pieces of land that you might possibly land on that could be problematic, but most of it is, is water, which will cushion your blow. I really like Giant's Deep. You hit the guy's ship floating in the water. <laughs> Let's just, uh, let's get to fa space the expedient way. Dios mio, in another chat someone said that a family member ate two kilos of prawns in one sitting. That's close to 4.5 freedom units and is an unreasonable amount for one sitting. That is so many prawns. Did the guy eat nothing but prawns? And if so, what the fuck? Like, that's how you get, that's how you get sick. <laughs> I don't know if I have any un unidentified signals anymore. Escape pod. I think all of my unidentified signals have been identified. What about quantum ones? Island shard, tower shard. Yeah. I don't have any unidentified signals. I mean, okay, what the fuck is this? There's clearly a thing there, right? This can't just be me. There's a diffuse scattering of dots straight ahead. And now it's gone. Damn it. Oh, I know what that is. That's a fucking supernova. Fuck. It's in the distance. It's not even in our solar system. Okay, let's meditate, meditate to the next loop. Nick, dude. Hit me. Do you have do you have suggestions for how to find a thing that is new and relevant? If you do, I'm very excited to hear it. <laughs> Look at the exhibit again. I will gladly do so. Awesome. No, I got you. Thank you. No, no, I get it. I get it. I appreciate it. Honestly, if, if anyone ever wants to give me a hint for a game that I'm playing and you're not sure whether it would annoy me or be helpful, you could say, hey, do you want a hint yet? And uh, my answer to that will be an honest answer as to whether or not it would annoy me to get a hint right now. Which frequently I'm, I'm pretty open to it. Especially... Knowing that that question comes when I'm, like, not on the right trail. Dark and nine. <laughs> I worry about what you have to say. But yeah, I'm actually, I'm very curious. Okay, well. Answered my question before I, before I was able to ask it. 
I've never played this game, but have you considered that maybe you're a dumbass? Oh, fuck. Do a re-grab. I was able to convince a friend of mine to, uh, to play a little bit of, of, um, Kaizo. I sort of booted up, uh, uh Quickie World 1 and just handed him the control. I'm like, here, go ahead and play this, see how this goes. Went well. Okay. New exhibit. Radio tower. Okay. Radio tower. This is the radio tower. That's one one note. Why do I hate my friend? I think my friend would like would like Kaizo, at least as much as, as, as he wants to play. And then I sent him a a care package. That was a zip that had uh, Quickie World 1 and 2. Actually, here, let me tell you exactly what was in this care package because uh, I know some people would be entertained by this. The care package. I had ROMs split into four tiers. Tier 1. They're all labeled zero, zero, 01 point and then the name. Q Kaiser World, Diagonal Mario World, Nightmare Cafe 1, 2, 3, and 4, Quickie World 2, Quickie World 1, Rob Fathers, Super Joe Bros, Super LSG World. Tier 2. Akugare, Chain Reaction, Hyperion, Kurosu, Kuso Ecstasy, Take It Easy World. Tier 3. Akko 2, Dancer to Discord and System, Invictus, Super Dram World. Tier 4. Grand Pooh World, Grand Pooh World 2. I gave them the diagonal because I think they would find it funny. Okay, so the radio tower on Timber Hearth, I need to visit there. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And there's plenty more that can go in, in the meantime. It's just like a, if you're interested in this and you don't want to ask any questions, then you don't have to. Here's, here's a zip. Extract it and run everything. Okay. Recent upgrade the deep space satellite. Okay, so I, I did I did manage to encounter the deep space satellite, but I have not gone to the radio tower here on Timber Hearth. So let's try that. Oh, thank you, Echo, for thirty minutes of point wasting disabling. Point wasters, get fucked. Yeah, oh, you have another 30 minutes to wait. Let's just do this. You're giddy with excitement. Glorious. <laughs> and here's a useless cycle. <laughs> where I just wandered around and then got myself killed. It's fine. It's fine. We have all the time in the world now. Radio tower on Timber Hearth. Let's find it. Tass, I just want to point out that the map with five treasure chests was something I ground dozens of Peglin runs for, so it's not an issue with the generation algorithm. Its existence indicates an issue with the, the Peglin generation algorithm. It's easy enough to write an algorithm, just a recursive generation one that will preclude you from creating any maps that have certain things you don't wish to have, like five treasure chests in a row. I completely disagree with the statement that this does not indicate a broader issue with the generation algorithm. I have written recursive generation algorithms that allow you to do anything that you want. Okay, we're looking for a radio tower. This is the run. Let's see. Oh my god. Okay. Preliminary thoughts are that such a radio tower would be most useful by the poles because it will give you an un unobstructed view of half of the trajectory. Oh, that is that new? I think that's new. Half the trajectory of a uh, a perpendicular. I disagree. Flight. It's perfectly balanced. Too smug. See if anyone doesn't recognize just smug as a. Uh, an adequate emote to indicate sarcasm. Well, they, they would be justified in being confused. 
Was this here originally? I don't remember it. I don't remember a teleportation thing here. I think that's new. Oh, wait. Yeah, so this is this is the starting planet. I don't remember ever teleport. Oh, wait, wait. Does this let you teleport to the moon? I might I might just be retreading old ground. But is this new? I don't fucking remember. God, it's it's been it's been a long ass time. It's been such a long time. I think I should be going. I do remember the uh, the the waterfall. I don't remember this planet being so fucking hollow though. What is this a bleach enemy? See what I did there? Okay. I feel like this is new. There is one caveat to this. Someone is trying to take the record for number of relics in a run from me, and if this gets removed from the next update, then I will hold the record forever. So that is a plus. That is a plus. Huh. I feel like there's some shenanigans here. I don't think this is... I think this is new. I'm still amazed by how much ore the Astrum project requires. <laughs> Isn't this the, uh, the ore for the... Isn't this the ore for the remaining towers being built in Ashtwin? The completed towers I've seen are quite large. No, the material for those towers is, is all being taken from Ashtwin. The ore we're mining here will be used to craft an immensely thick protective shell that will physically seal off the chamber inside Ashtwin's core. They're sealing off all, all entrances. I hope they've planned a core dingly. Nice. I thought you had forbidden your apprentice from making puns, Coleus. How else would he improve? I'm relieved by our clan's decision to use Timber Hearth's ore uh, only for constructing the shell. If, evidently, life on this planet were to evolve uh, to the point of being advanced, to the point of advanced metallurgy, I'm confident we won't have destroyed their ability to create. That's appropriate, because we are the life that was evolving on the planet when these creatures were here. We are the lizard people that supplanted the goat people of the distant past. Okay, so I'm in the water right now. I understand. Okay, what, what is this nonsense? I'm deep inside the planet. Why is gravity one times right now? I should still be basically at like, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, something like that. I have zero gravity in the water and one whole gravity outside of it. It doesn't make any fucking sense. I'm calling shenanigans. As you descend inside of a planet, you should be able to take a sphere from where you are, from your radius, from the center of the planet inward. That, the, that planet that's encapsulated by that tiny sphere 
that is uh, the only thing that determines gravitational force currently pulling you in inside the planet. Everything else cancels out perfectly. So if you go... I'm trying to think. If you go interior to a planet such that half of the mass is external to that sphere, which is not very far into a planet, you've eliminated half of the, uh, the gravity. Everything else cancels out. Only the things internal to that sphere remain. Why is... I think the audio is having problems. I think the, uh, the DLC introduced some new bugs. Right now we're experiencing one where I think the audio is being processed as if I'm still underwater. Probably can fix it by going underwater and leaving again, but uh... So here's an Ash Twin Projection Stone. Let's try this out. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, yeah, let's let's put this over here and see uh, what messages they had to share. It's a little little bit of a shame to see that new bugs are introduced by the uh, new systems, but my gratitude for the latest shipment, Oeno. This ore should be the last we'll need for the Ash Twin project. This is exciting news. Can I offer an extra set of eyes for this uh, final check, specifically mine? If my work here is complete, I'll be delighted to help. We'd be grateful if you would. The more eyes, the better, as the smallest flaw or opening in the shell that protects the Ashwin project could lead to disaster. Once we're finished, uh, the shell that seals off the central... Uh, with the shell... No, once we've finished, the shell that seals off the central chamber we will check to ensure that there are no longer any physical entrances. Raimi and I will, will be checking the interior... And then the exterior for cracks, our final safety check. Okay. I wonder if this means that there's new things we can do in the Ash Twins. Yeah, the game's audio is basically muted right now. Bugs! Ah, uh, fuck. None of this area is new? Fuck. Okay, I'm an idiot. Damn it. I don't remember any of this, Nick dude. But it's been almost a year. So, I'm gonna claim that as my reason. <laughs> Gosh. Is there anything new on Timber Hearth? Let's see if this resets the audio. If not, I need to um, mess around with shit. I don't hear any of the audio I expect to hear, so that's bad news. Radio tower. Okay, I'm still looking for the fucking radio tower. I absolutely love this game. The new bugs are not very exciting. Okay, I'm actually going to quit and relaunch it. Because the uh, audio is still muted. Imagine having an audio effect that would persist outside of a run. <sighs> yeah, this is my second significant bug. The first one was the uh, inability to select a planet for uh, velocity neutralization. Should be able to hear it. I don't hear anything. Hmm. 
You can hear it. Okay. Oh, you're right. Audio is fine. My headphones were slightly displaced. That one was my fault. That was on me. It seems that uh, through messing around with shit, I slightly tugged on my audio cable, which displaced the, uh, the headphones just enough that I was getting a weak signal, but not no signal. Not gonna talk about that one. <laughs> doesn't matter though, doesn't matter. Resets come free. They're driven by the, uh, the power of the supernova. Okay. <laughs> no one's falling uh, anything. Okay, we're looking for the radio tower. Once again, I assert I would expect it to be on the rotational poles such that it could have consistent access. There it is. Um, it would have access to a, a clear, clear view of the orbit of this new satellite for half of its orbit. These trees, that's normal. And we're recording. Ahem. It's been two days since the launch of the Deep Space Satellite, and I'm about to view the first batch of photos. Let the record show that on this historic day, Outer Wilds Ventures has... Ah, they're printing, they're printing, here they come. Stars above. Will you look at that? There's Riddle Hollow and look, look there. That's Hollow's Lantern. And there's Giant's Deep and the Quantum Moon. I'm speechless, completely speechless. Every single astral body, our magnificent solar, uh, in our magnificent solar system, looking stunning from every angle in each of these images and in color, no less. Now this is art. I could stare at these photos forever. Doesn't Timber Hearth look tiny from... Hold on. What's that? That can't be right. That's... I mean, that's not even possible. Am I interpreting this photo correctly? What's even stranger is it doesn't show up in either of the other photos. Just this one. Well, there must have been an equipment malfunction, I suppose. Only sensible explanation for it. I'll radio Gabbro and ask them to examine the satellite's lens for defects. Okay. I'm guessing the one that captures Timber Hearth. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Okay. This all makes sense. This all makes sense. This all makes sense. There's the quantum moon, by the way. Quantum moon, there's Timber Hearth's moon, there's Ember Twin. Which one of these is, is different? <laughs> Massive astronaut is blocking out the sun. So which one of these is wrong? What is that? So Giant's Deep has the quantum moon in this in this picture. There's the Amber Twins. There's Timber Hearth and its moon. There's the fucking Bramble. Who's in what's it? There's the Interloper. What is that? Bramble. 
Brittle Hollow. You're right. That might be Brittle Hollow. And and the um uh... oh, oh I'm sorry, that's Brittle Hollow. Maybe? I don't know. Either way. Yeah, you're right, you're right. That's Brittle Hollow because that's that's the Amber Twin. What is that? The orbit of uh, Timber Hearth should make it like th that big. It should be that tiny one, if anything. Holy crap. Hossage. Hossage? <laughs> Holy crap. Hossage has just overrun the channel with nine viewers. Brace yourselves, chat. Welcome on in, everyone. How's it going, Hossage? I'm playing through the uh, DLC for the first time. Completely sober, obviously, because that would be irresponsible otherwise. Thank you, uh, Wizbill, for dropping that, uh, that shout-out. Working on, oh, of course, Echoes of, the, uh, Echoes of the Eye DLC. Fantastic. Well, welcome on in, everyone. I, I'm Task Agent. I primarily play... Super Mario World Kaizo ROM hacks, so absolute nonsense. Uh, the most insanely difficult platformers that exist on the planet is what me and several of my friends uh, will play in our in in most of our time on Twitch. But every once in a while, there will be a uh, a diversion for something like this. We were just checking out these images, trying to figure out where to go with the DLC. I'm betting that Hostage is is farther through the DLC than I am at this point. Welcome on in, uh, Nick Rick, Foxy, Roxy, Jen, and Hossage. Uh, what else do you play, Hossage? So what is this planet here? Wonder how hard the platforms are when they're made off planet. <laughs> I guess it depends. You're about eight hours into it after tonight. Oh, wow. So you're saying it's not small. So... We don't know what this is. Right? Right? So we have Giants Deep off on the left. The Interloper. We have the Ember Twins. We have the Quantum Moons orbiting the Ember Twins. I, I, I can control with my mouse. We have the Quantum Moon orbiting the Ember Twins. We have... Timber Hearth, its moon. We have Brittle Hollow and its moon. The fucking Bramble bullshit. I don't remember what that's called. What is this? Interesting. Variety leaning towards indie games. Doing a spooky month for October, but I couldn't. Yes, of course, exactly the same. I wanted to do some spooky shit for for October, but I couldn't wait on. Uh, on this. Okay. So this is useless. Thank you, astronaut. I think we have our second sighting of something unusual. Here's the first. Here's the second. Well, welcome on in, everyone. And make sure to give a hostage a follow. I don't know you yet, but I shall, shall soon. Here, let me uh, do this. And, ooh, oh, Root, nice. Do you play uh, the board game version as well? Or, or board games as well? I have a wide, an obnoxiously large collection of board games that I've, uh, I've worked on over time. Okay. The question is, where is this view taken from? Unidentified signal nearby. What the fuck is this referring to?
Hold on, let me just make sure we get this uh, before the time runs out on this run. There we go. Frequency discovered deep space radio. Ooh. A random raid. IOS channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've definitely been active in IOS channel before. Unconfirmable fun fact. When Plato <laughs> gave Socrates' his definition of man as featherless bipeds and was much praised for the definition, Diogenes plucked a chicken and brought it into Plato's academy, saying, Behold, I brought you man. <laughs> After this incident, with broad flat nails was added to Plato's definition. <laughs> <laughs> Featherless bipeds. The issue with that quote, Echo, is that it, it mistakes Diogenes' statement not necessarily as obscene and very pointed criticism, but rather as enthusiasm that's, that's misplaced. But yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm in, in Ios' channel all the time. Ios is a glorious human being, and... Y'all should uh, follow Ios as well if you're not already. Okay. So let's check out this. Oh, deep space radio. Okay, we have a brand new category. This will help us because we needed. There it is. How? Boom. Got it. Neutralize and then accelerate. Am I following IOS already? You should be. If you aren't, well, you can rectify this right now. I need to uh, close the gap somehow. Seven, six, five, four. Two, one. Oh, look at that. Fairly close. Fairly close. Just two kilometers off. No big deal. And now we're one kilometer off. We're just going to oscillate, but we are, it's a damped oscillation, so it's fine. We'll converge on the location in no time. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Hell yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, delightfully close. Okay. This time we actually have, oh gods. And head into lurk mode. Have have a wonderful night, hostage. Thanks thanks again for the raid. Um, this is not a setback. This is deliberate. I wanted to see how robust the uh, satellite was to collisions. The answer seems to be not particularly. Look at that map offline. It's just because your technology sucks. That's fine. We'll get back in our ship. Does anything need repairs? I kind of fucked up our ship. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Oh, you, wait. Before that, though. Okay, we do. We have identified the uh, signal as the deep space satellite. That's what I wanted to check. It was like that when I got here. Whatever. Next cycle, no one will know. And we're good. Okay. Great. Let me just uh, refuel. And I guess now we just stare at the sun, right? I don't believe I've heard anything bad about staring at the sun. Wait, what is this?
What is passing in front of the sun? What are you? Okay, what is this fucking thing? How? How do you exist? We're going to kill our velocity relative to the uh, sun. We're going to travel downwards. I don't understand. Let's travel this way. I guess I could just travel towards... Yes, yes, yes. Isolate... Sit inside the middle of the sun, that's great. So some sort of shadow being cast into this dimension, I want to say. Yeah, if you, if you have the opportunity to answer what your favorite indie game is, I'm curious to hear. But if you are unable to answer, looking at it... <laughs> That's, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Oh my god, is there... There it is. Okay. Some sort of portal that we can enter by, uh, by approaching the sun from the right direction. And we've gotten inside of it. Holy shit. Exit the ship. I will gladly exit this fucking ship. The fuck is going on? Do I have any sort of flashlight? No. That. Let's go there. Roki. Actually, I've never heard of Roki. Is anyone able to tell me what Roki's about? Holy shit, this is so cool! The fuck is this? I'm... Oh, you're right, yeah, R3. I don't know that it would have helped me when I was so far from everything, but, uh, here. Here, maybe. Unknown language. Oh, we have, a, we have another alien. Holy crap, we have another alien. Now we gammon. I'd like to point out, I objected to some of the premises of the original game when it came to, like, why randomly, without any notable cause, uh, stars were suddenly going supernova. Because that's not really how the universe works. There's no age of the universe, and uh, stars are staggered all over the place based off of their input mass. Actually, the larger, the more mass a star has, the uh, the shorter its lifespan. How's the DLC? It's it's going really well so far. We just we kind of just stumbled across our first notable new thing. How's it going, Bennett? How are you? And if you're hanging out already, follow these 
fantastic people that are in chat who've been streaming for a while and are friends of the stream. Nick Dude and Bennett Star. Nick Dude, uh, part of the inspiration for my uh, recently tackling all of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. And Bennett, who's uh, just infinitely uh, optimistic when it comes to uh, tackling Kaizo stuff, right? Is, is, is that a, an appropriate summary? It feels, feels like an appropriate summary. My fucking flashlight does shit! Holy fuck! That's weird. Okay. I turned on my flashlight on a whim and it started rotating things. Oh my god. Is this a ring world? Spawn by true. Absolutely right, Ipoa. The uh, real the, the universe is not uh, governed by um, observation. That is not how uh, actual quantum mechanics works. Though that is how uh, it works within the universe of um, who's and what's it? What's it called? Outer Wilds. Their interpretation, interpretation of quantum mechanics is somewhat problematic, but actually I think makes for pretty good game mechanics. <laughs> you know, I almost, in my, uh, in my 18 hour charity stream, I almost did some uh, Stellaris. There we go. And Stellaris would have included uh, definitely building a ring world megastructure. Because why, why not? Wait. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Well, that's, that's, that's partially fair. The downside that- wait, hold on. Is this separate from where I came in? I feel like it might be. Star Trek mod for Stellaris is insanely detailed and good. I did- so, so, uh, Bennett, what I was specifically gonna make for- for the charity stream was a race that was basically the Borg, but it was turning everyone into this. Is this definitely where I came in? I don't see my ship. And so so I actually made a specialized mod for for Stellaris where it was basically the Borg, but it was turning every every population into that. I was pretty pleased with it. Oh, yep, yeah. okay. Let's reset. Did I blow up my ship when I entered? I may have. I expected to see my ship, and I thought maybe I was exiting in a different solar system. But, uh, but no, I think Nick Dude was completely right. Like, my ship wasn't there. Uh, it didn't blow up, but I didn't see it. Uh, maybe it blew up after I entered. Maybe there was a weird physics glitch and it, it, um, ended up in no man's land. But, uh...
Let's just go through this. Okay. I, th I I wasn't convinced I was necessarily in the same spot, but I think uh, that bears out. Um, okay, let's see. <laughs> the stranger. Isn't that... A, I, I believe that's a sexual maneuver. So suit up, just in case. Okay. Do we have a HUD marker for the stranger? Not, I don't see it. So. Yeah, that's, that's where, where one sits on their own hand until it's numb and then uses it for oneself. And uh, the numbness means that your brain doesn't say, hey, this is my own hand. It's not, it's not particularly useful, but uh, it is a thing. Okay, is it there? Ah, there it is. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> Whether or not one wishes to learn what what a particular uh, idiosyncratic or, or otherwise unfamiliar term is, one will probably do so here anyway. Okay. I'm hoping that this just acts like a portal. Looks like it does. Okay, slow down. We can enter now. I was previously just free floating in the abyss, which is maybe, ooh, gods. Okay, which is maybe why I ended up adrift. If, if my ship still existed. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. The immediate obvious follow-up question is, how many doors do I see around the periphery of this room? I see one other door. I think that means there's one other place that I can get this to bring me. Okay, now let's go upstream. So now it looks like we are on the inside of a ring world. And this, as a concept, is really fucking cool. Okay, that's how we release. What else do we find here? Oh god, this is so awesome. Okay, we can't translate the language. But we knew that. Have I read Ringworld? I have not, but I'm familiar with its existence. I know it involves getting together like the luckiest person on the planet, or on in the in the system, as well as some other people, and a friend of mine had read it and sort of updated me on what it was about. Though I've I intend to read Ringworld at some point. I've yet to do so. Really good, recommend, awesome. How recently did you read it? Like, years ago? Or... Somewhat recently? I guess, is it, does it still hold appeal for you? There we go. I figured um, making that Hmm. 
2014. Oh, okay, okay. You you were an adult when you uh, when you read it. That's good. I wasn't sure uh, if you would still feel the same. Ooh, very nice. God, this is so weird. How do I get back up there? I have to go around? Okay. Then I definitely should read it. I, uh, I've been putting it off. Other obligations. Hmm. Okay. It looks like there are three principally independent states that this thing gets put into. A long beam from the sun facing left. That is the curves on the left. Short nub. Curve on the right. Short nub. Back to curve, curve on the left. I don't imagine these short nubs are relevant, so... It's like one or the other that's actually going to matter. Mirrors isn't defined by observation, but isn't it? I'll be a more abstract rendering of observation than the common colloquial uh, conscious observer. Has no bearing on, on quantum systems, but still, definition comes from particles observing each other via interactions. Not really. The, the broader, more colloquial interpretation of quantum mechanics at this point involves particles being entangled with a more universal state. Oh. Is this... I see. Um, broadly speaking, we don't tend to think of quantum mechanics in terms of ob observation. And that is, like, an important, um, thing, I guess. Got to head to bed. Have a great night, Nick, dude. Thanks for hanging out. Um, yeah. As, as someone who's not actually, like, op Wait. What's going on? Okay. I like it. So, so I'm not employed as a physicist anymore, so I can't necessarily speak to what is common in physics. But broadly speaking, we've moved away from any sort of interpretation that involves, like, knowing about a an observer. Hmm. Am I going to get a uh, torch at some point? God. What is going on? Obviously, it is... Um, accurate to say that quantum mechanics is complicated, but um, but no no observer-based interpretation is really in vogue anymore. N nor was it really ever. It, it presents some problems, obviously. No one ever thought within the, like, sort of realistic physics community that um, observers were important. There were, there were just issues when it came to how one poses the physics that doesn't involve somewhat arbitrary events that trigger um, evaluation, right? So, like, that's the problem with quantum mechanics, is that, like, observations, measurements are destructive. Um, they, they force states into... 
into one of their mutually exclusive alternatives, and uh, and that's the end of it, right? But obviously that can't be how things actually work, because it doesn't make any sense. If the universe can't be governed by observation, and indeed it's not. Um, Hold on, let's go over here and check out what's going on with this pod. Can I? I can. Interesting. No, come back. Fuck, it's gone. Okay, we'll just have a companion raft that we can catch up to. This is really interesting and really fucking strange. Okay. Where? Oh, there, there, there. I see it. I see a way up. I I should have my my sister try to to address some uh, questions about more recent interpretation of quantum mechanics, especially in light of um, stuff like quantum computers, because she actually has some expertise with quantum quantum computing that I do not. Observer in physics was redefined to be uh, more the ability to collect information, but even that actually still poses problems, right? Because it, it almost sounds like you're expecting the universe to bootstrap one's the ability of an interaction to be relevant. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, like, I, I can answer some basic-ish questions about quantum computing. Um, it's just I can't necessarily delve into intricate matters about how it works um, as much as my sister can. Because of some of the difficulties associated with it, but uh, here we go. We have we have a lantern. That's not right. Oh, I see. Interesting. So, for example, uh, quantum teleportation, which uh, we've talked about before. Quantum teleportation is a fundamental element of quantum computing, uh, which is frequently disastrously misrepresented in popular media, right? If you read an article about quantum teleportation, it frequently makes it sound like teleportation, or at least like what we colloquially think of as teleportation, moving something instantaneously from one position to another. Um, it actually bears no resemblance to that whatsoever. Quantum teleportation is the ability to move a quantum state from one particle to another. And is very relevant uh, for quantum computers because it's actually super important to um, be able to move effectively quantum bits around within a computer. Right. If you couldn't move bits around, it, like the idea of having a computer is is nonsense. Computers are all about relocating their bits and and moving them uh, moving them about for computation. Hey, Siddharth, <laughs> Siddharth Vader, how's it going, dude? Um, fundamental component of computers. Uh oh. Yes, yeah, I would agree with that paradoxical. Anything gets a special role in physics, it cannot be a foundational component of how the universe works. By definition. So quantum teleportation is just the process of moving quantum bits around. Okay, here, let's see. That's not great. I wonder how much time I have. I 
I wonder if I've been to this tower. I have no idea what everything is right now, so. Ah, shit. Overheated. Um. But yeah. No more, no more fascinating or interesting than, um, hey, move this, this value to this address on, on a computer. Like, that is quantum teleportation within a quantum computer. It's just about moving states and nothing more interesting than that. Interesting. So we can poke around more and see what's going on here. I wonder how accessible this particular place is before whatever just uh, moved all, exploded and moved all this shit. No, no, get me back on fucking board. You know what? This is fine. This is fine. We're good. We're good. What the fuck is this? I can refuel my jetpack. All right, that's cool. Come back, raft. No. Oh, look at that. Let's go. Hmm. Oh, shit. Let's try to go over here. It feels like all the water continuously flows in one direction here, so this may give us access to new heights, or at least new locations. I may also need to bypass the uh, places I stopped earlier and keep going in the future. Like that, that feels new. And you know, the fact that it says ship's log update also feels new. I can't make that. Okay. Maybe I ride this out. See what else I can what I can encounter in the meantime. Looks like there's a raft right up here. That's cool. Wait. We can go over here. Oh, got another update. Nice. Need to get at least some le some sleep before work. We'll have a wonderful night, Apoa. Thanks for hanging out. And yep, I will I will be around. I'll probably save um, this until next week, same time, same place. We'll do uh, Sunday night. So I stream Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So Sunday nights I will start with some co-op with the wife. And then after she goes to bed, I'll switch over to uh, Outer Wilds DLC. What are my thoughts on the base game settings? I'm not sure what you mean by settings. Overall, I found the base game to be pretty solid. Like, it worked really well. I didn't have trouble going through it, but... Um... But yeah, I was, I was pleased by the base game. Okay, here we go. There we go. That's what I expected to find. Hold on. The way it handled physics. Um, I thought it was... I thought it worked well. 
Like, it made sense uh, from the perspective of being a game, right? There we go. Like, that all was was fairly intuitive. Um, I still I still have issues with their interpretation of quantum mechanics because it's not like a realistic interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's like a pop interpretation of quantum mechanics. But I, I don't think there's a problem with that. I think there's a, a place for it. And, you know, games. Definitely, definitely a reasonable place for that. Um... It would be a shame if anyone was, like, walking away from the game with a serious misunderstanding of it, but I, I don't think that was really a phenomenon. I don't think anyone, like, fundamentally came to misunderstand quantum mechanics because of Outer Wilds. Right, like, it's, it's still a game, and I think people interpret it, uh, accordingly. Okay. How... Does this work now? I thought it was it was really cool. It was like a a fun way of gamifying some of the core mechanics of the game. Wait, what the fuck is going on? Hold up. There's some interesting shit here. So I think this is forward. So we're looking forward in time. Now. So did they take some sort of machinery thing, encase it, and bury it in the water? Interesting. That's fascinating. Well, we now have a new objective. Oh, there it is. Is this it? I feel like that music only plays when I figure something out before. So <laughs> I'm optimistic. Though, though, obviously, it would be playing now because of, like, exposure to new information. Oh, what is this? <laughs> I can roast marshmallows or doze off in the middle of this machinery. I mean, I feel we're not quite there yet. Okay, what the fuck is going on? Stows off. Let's so reset the uh, the clock. How long does it let me go? Okay, now we're probably encountering. Uh... So I was like thirty seconds away from the apocalypse. Interesting. Here we go. Get some water. 
Interesting. The way we died due to the supernova seemed different. But as was pointed out, we can actually go straight there. So we can actually have even more time. Let's grab the suit. Okay, we're gonna blast off, immediately find the sun, figure out the plane of the orbit of the planets, which is approximately like this, and look to the right. Right, left, look per perpendicular to it. Oh, the stranger, there we are. And blast off straight there. Oh, we have autopilot, so up. That can bring us there close, uh, faster. I forgot all about autopilot. Okay. Oh gods. Wait, this looks so different. I guess I never saw- oh shit. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, we don't need to get back. There we go. Fuck this ship, we're out. Yeah, I think um, I think the original game made people wonder more interesting questions than it did give them wrong answers. Like, it wasn't perfect. Interesting, so I didn't end up in the same place as before. It was not perfect, but I honestly did, do not think that it uh, it did anything wrong when it came to uh, to providing non-physical but interesting answers to uh, to questions. Okay, here, let's go like this. Oh, wait, hold on. I recognize this. Uh, how do I take pictures? Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh gods. No. No. Not ideal. That's fine. We can get back there pretty quick. The question is where will we end up? I wonder if it behaves in a quantum-like way, where we can close the door, effectively close the door and reopen it, and end up somewhere new. Okay, where's the sun? Doo 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 doo. Nope, doesn't matter. Got the stranger. Go. Off, headlights on.
Okay. Back inside the stranger. Boop. Skid up, butt up. All right. There we go. The gnome I mentioned that they got close to the eye and observed uh, macroscopic quantum phenomena. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, like, I, I think I encountered basically everything from in the original game. Oh, shit. Hold on. That was me realizing I did put on my suit. Yeah. Not a particularly um, physical interpretation of quantum mechanics. That is, it's not physics-based. Fun for the game, but, like, it doesn't have any... Actual grounding in in physics But again just to reiterate I don't think it needs to I thought it, it was an interesting setting and, and reasonably self-consistent and that that's what matters the most right? Wait pre fright pre-flight checklist That's interesting. Hmm. All right. Stranger. But yeah, macroscopic quantum phenomena, you're generally constrained to things like Bose-Einstein cons condensates and uh, some other macroscopic quantum phenomena. With Bo Bose-Einstein condensates, you can see them literally climb the surface of the container that, that contains them. Um, probably some other interesting stuff, but nothing that's like particularly noteworthy. It's things that are, are sound aphysical until you consider why they occur. Okay. We're suited up. We're suited up. Glorious. Okay. Nope. And let's go back down. <laughs> the, most people have never heard the term Bose-Einstein condensate, but uh, generally you're talking about like strange particles that you get down to almost absolute zero and uh, see what they do. You know what? Let's try this again, shall we? Okay, try this, not this. Okay, I could tell because of the thing I sent through before that that was brief. I could blast right through it. Oh, I can come up from below. I think that's what I meant to do. Artifact. Interesting. What the fuck is this? Interesting. Gods, ah, uh, fucked right, walked right into that. Um, but yeah, though honestly, like since I left grad school, when would that be? Uh, twenty fourteen, 
2013 ish. I've been uh, working as a programmer sort of in neuroscience. And so th that's actually been my main um, reference for academia now for a while. My wife's a neuroscientist and I've actually been working uh, developing so hardware and software for neuroscience. So the physics becomes more and more uh, distant from my, <laughs> from my perspective over time. No. There we go. Uh, so, so I, so I currently work um, developing hardware and software for really several neuroscience labs. Hold on. There we go. Um, yeah. Like the fairly broad applications, but um, auditory and visual stuff. Um, I've, I've actually published a paper of my own uh, specifically about modern or like more efficient means of calculating stimuli that are, are of interest to, to uh, psychoacoustics, which is um, z sort of the overlap of psychology and, and uh, auditory stimuli. There we go. Basically, I, I'm a, a, at this point, a mathematician and programmer who has happened upon a, uh, a field that's in need of some of those uh, particular talents. No, that's not what I want. I want my bumper photo mode. Okay, so I can go up from underneath and get the scout launcher. I still have to figure out what the fuck to do with it. Well, not the scout launcher, but whatever the fuck this is. This is interesting. What what do I capture with this? Unknown. <laughs> Quite all right. I uh, I appreciate I appreciate ignorance in the meantime. There we go. Okay, we'll just have to figure out right bumper conceal or focuses and left bumper conceals. I've got to pick up something. I wonder if these alien, this alien species came after the extinction of the, uh, the prior one, but before... ours became the, uh... No, okay. The dominant race. Hmm... An audible rumble from the controller. I can see that. Okay, we'll set you down. So, what I really need is a lantern. If I can't get a fucking lantern, I can't actually see what these, uh... What these things are saying. And guess what was no help? Going back here. Okay, I wonder if I can get all the way over here. Grab a lantern and come back. Glorious. 
Because there's several things that I want to check out here that may give me more insight. Ooh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this goes here. Ba doom. And now. Okay. That is the. Um, the quantum phenomena that we end up going to the center of the universe. Not exactly that, but whatever it's called. Oh, interesting. So this thing emitted, emitted pulses that were measured by this nearby solar system. <laughs> Owls with antlers. So they formed a ship to come out here. This symbol refers to their ship, which I think is the stranger. The fact that it's represented as a disc suggests that that is the case. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so they spent a while building it. You can see it's under construction here. Okay. We also have one more thing to read. It's back in here. Here it is. Okay. Something sealed up. Creepy owl picture. Awesome. Able to emit some illumination that unlocks this thing. Obviously, this is a reference to Bessel functions because uh, there's no other good Good interpretation. I'm curious what my ship's log has to say about this. Anything else up here? No, it doesn't look like it. We've seen both of those. Hmm. Imagine, imagine the ship from our homeland that accidentally wandered straight into the stranger. They'd be fucked. They'd be totally fucked. We are not very adaptable as a species. We did, though, get to bootstrap a tremendous amount of technology based off of what was made available to us. Like, I mentioned this uh, my first playthrough, but a fundamental part of how our ship works is using the, the anti-grav uh, crystals that were manufactured by the, uh, the precursor civilization. Something that we uh, wouldn't remotely have access to otherwise. Okay, that's kind of fun. There's the other one. We found you already. That's great. Let's keep going. Let's see what else we find. Uh, 
You know what? I'm kind of okay passing this one. Let's keep going. Arthene's very adaptable. Does it, though? All it really means is that they're able to make use of existing technology that they were able to uh, get their hands on, which we haven't necessarily established other species aren't very good at, right? I mean, I think uh, species in general are going to be pretty good at, at making use of what they have. Shit, okay. So we missed that one, but that's fine. Let's see what else we got. I don't know that it makes it necessarily makes them any more adaptable than everyone else. I'd, ne I'd first need a demonstration that they were able to do things with other people's technology that they were not. Or that other people couldn't in a similar situation. Interesting, we have some sort of password. Right, but, but we'd, in order for that to actually be remarkable, we need a demonstration that other people couldn't have built a, a translator, right? It, it still doesn't demonstrate that they're doing anything that anyone else couldn't do. So I don't see any any indication that they're more adaptable than other people have been. Okay, here we go. So we have a lantern here already. Wonderful. Just need to find anything to put in there. It's all well and good if they're able to build a translator, but for that to be noteworthy, they need to be the only ones capable of building a translator. Otherwise, they're just the latest in a long string of people who need to translate other people's works. Ah, fuck. Cycle around... What inconvenient doors. I know you need lights to see, but lights are also going to close the door when you walk up on them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good enough to get by, I, I would not disagree with. The premise just being that um, that's all they're really doing. Nice. So we don't know how this works. Some sort of password's gonna be required. Yeah, it's all they'll have a chance to do, at the very least. Because it's telling me right now, hey, you're not gonna get through there, so use one of these. I fire, oh wait, no, sun, I fire, I fire. That looks like a password to me. Okay. Sun. I fire. Like that. Easy peasy. Look at that. Refill my jetpack. This thing is totally busted. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. What's that sound? No. I just got here, you asshole son. Asshole son, don't you come and blast away the ring. Asshole son, don't you come. Actually, we're, we're still good. We're not dead yet. Okay, so what is this? Something is misconfigured in the middle? Something about aligning of the beams? Hmm. I wonder if I'm reading too much into uh, these alignment phases. Crossing, most eccentric, crossing, most divergent. I don't know. We definitely got some sort of ship update from being in here, so that's a thing. I wonder if I can go farther. Oh, gods. Not like this. Oh shit, there's a bridge. That's pretty incredible. Do I have to push you downhill? I think I, I think I do. Yeah, look at this. I can do a tiny bit at a time. Seriously? Whatever, it works. Well, nice of it to uh, automatically tumble to be face up. No. Yes. Okay. Fuck off. Where are we going next? I wonder if this would be more familiar to me if it hadn't been destroyed yet. And I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is do a run where I go this far immediately. So I can see what all this looks like before any destruction occurs. Can I, can I swim? Oh, I can swim. Fantabulous. Oh, gods. Photo mode. So we have some of the shenanigans, which is definitely gonna fuck us up. Oh, is this? Wait. This is where I picked up the device. Picked it up from that table. Interesting. So the water seems to be rising. That's going to pose some problems. Okay, well, so that means we've done a loop. We have done one full loop. Oh, it's so cool to be able to look at everything from, from uh, any position. Ring worlds are the best. 
Except, I've mentioned this before, they're not gravitationally stable. You actually build a ring around a star or planet or anything, there's absolutely no force that will stabilize it to uh, center the star. You're just kind of fucked. You have to use extrinsic forces to keep it stable because it is not gravitationally stable. Hmm. As much as it might be nice to be able to have a, a thing that would just center it, center the star in the middle of itself and just rotate around it. Gravitationally, you don't have that option. Uh, would, would not actually be necessary. But it also wouldn't help you. Because there's nothing, no force that you can use that will actually center the star within the ring. Um, it also wouldn't, wouldn't actually be inclined to spin around it. If it were stationary, it would stay stationary and just sort of drift until the star collided into it and then the whole thing would collapse. That's presuming that it could withstand these sort of infinite, uh forces that would be exerted on the body to a contort into whatever dimension would uh, hold on, would best support the body. <laughs> but, uh, but spinning would actually do very little to help it. Okay. I'm thinking I'm about to die. Just from time. But I don't know that I've seen these properly with a, uh, a lantern of some kind. What is this? Well, so that, that's the thing. Uh, the way that a, a planet um, cohesively orbits is that all of the, the planet is interacting with, with the rest. And so, like, the nearby thing experiences different forces. Like, the, near, the closest component of a planet to a star experiences different forces than the farthest component. But collectively, collectively they end up um, distributing the force such that the, uh, the planet has a, a single cohesive force on it. Uh, you're, you're you're sort of generally expecting this to distribute, but if it doesn't, your your equation for like how how the orbit looks uh, can work out to be very different. You end up getting things like like in real life, you get things like tidal forces. Oh shit! I thought that was a um, an actual boundary. I'm trying to see if there's anything interesting down here before I uh, I die from from timeout. So, the reason, for example, the moon is tidally locked with the Earth is that the, the gravitational force of the Earth on the moon causes it to bulge. There we go. That's us dying. Here's the Earth and here's the moon. They're, uh, the, the moon is orbiting the Earth, right? Well, the moon doesn't just stay here as a single rigid body without, without anything happening to it. It's actually... Like, rather than just being a sphere, it, it ends up bulging outward towards, I'm not trying to, to show it right, towards the Earth, right? So here's the Earth. The moon bulges, and it, it, it orbits the Earth in a way where this bulge is towards the Earth. The fact that it's rotating around and this bulge is moving actually causes the synchronization of the rotation of the moon to coincide with uh, pointing towards Earth wherever it goes. 
So th this is what causes it to be tidally locked to the Earth, and thus the same face is always facing the Earth. You'd see similar sort of phenomena with a ring orbiting, the, like, the Sun. A, uh, so like a... Um... What's it called? A ring world that was orbiting the Sun. If the Sun wasn't perfectly centered, it would actually exert different forces on different parts of it, and they wouldn't be evenly, like, shared among the uh, the ring world and so it would start behaving strangely but if you if you consider it to be infinitely rigid and able to, to uh, transfer all force it felt evenly throughout so that if you pushed here a little bit on one end the whole thing would drift right if you presuppose that then yeah the the a ring world would just drift aimlessly with a, with a star on the inside until it collided somewhere and then the whole thing would collapse That's what you're stuck with with with, uh, with the ring worlds. Huh. Vibration. Repair. What repairs need to be made. Yeah, I saw something in need of repairs. Okay. Is that all? It might be all. Mm. Even then, it, it wouldn't actually help you. The issue is that the math works out such that if you're in... Let me see. We can use this. Give me a moment. Set this down. So that I can speak freely. Do, 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 do. Let's see, quick notes, add a new one. So, you're, you're actually just fucked. And this is the, uh, the downside of uh, the way shit like this works. And let me hide this. Uh, ring world. If you are uh, orbiting... Uh, let me undo that. Orbiting a star as a ring. Okay. There you are. So in the center, right here, we have a star. And here's this... Oh, hold on, I'm doing it backwards. Uh, uh, that's really hard. <laughs> on the outside is our ring that's orbiting this star. Every, every element of that ring ends up actually getting a force on it that completely cancels out, oh shit, that's Discord, completely cancels out with everything else, right? Such that there is no net force on this ring by the star. Now in practice, it's actually very different because in practice, the force isn't infinitely and easily conducted through this ring uh, throughout, but in the, uh, in the idealized situation, Everything cancels out, and actually this ring freely drifts around with the star in the middle of it. Not in the dead center. Nothing pushes the star to the dead center. It just drifts aimlessly until the star collides with the ring. Because all gravitational forces completely cancel out. You're just fucked. You can't use gravity to keep the star in the middle, because it won't. Go. This 
So, um, so it's not even uh, about being a geosynchronous synchronous orbit. It wouldn't care. It would completely cancel out. Hey, Blobity, how's it going? Cancel my velocity. Excellent. First day of lectures today. And how, how have lectures been? Gotta go? Oh yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll be on for a bit. Maybe a couple more, couple more hours. But have a wonderful day, uh, Siddharth Vader. I'm happy to explain this later, too, if, uh, if you're curious about it. Um, first one is like two hours. Ooh, excited. Damn it. I can't hop up on these. <clears throat> Care to share uh, what classes you have today? To the extent that you're interested in, in, in uh, sharing that. I'm curious. And a social event in the evening. Ooh, very exciting. Okay, let's go. So this, check this out. We're on a fucking ring world. Look at this. Hell yes. <clears throat> Linear algebra, mathematical thinking, analysis, introduction to probability and stats. Ooh. Linear algebra sounds fun. <laughs> mathematical thinking, potentially. Uh, I guess I, I don't know what the, uh, the course would entail. I was just talking about gra why gravitationally a ring world isn't stable. Because the gravity always perfectly cancels out, and you'd actually be kind of fucked. Like, you don't want to be on a ring world. Yeah, yeah. You'll be on one for uh, for as long as it can keep itself stable. Now, granted, if you can figure out a energy-only way of actually inducing propulsion in space, right, then you may be able to, to create a way to keep your, uh, your ring world gravitationally stable. But as it is, it is on an unstable fixed point, and you will drift into the star, inevitably. It's over there. Let's go over there. This is so cool, though. I've never been in a game that actually simulates a ring world, and I fucking love it already. And nearly jumped off. That would not have been ideal. You still can't translate their language. Heard good things about Outer Wilds? Yes, yes, you absolutely should play Outer Wilds. So this is the DLC. Um... And so this sort of is orthogonal to the main game. Highly recommend, though. I think, uh, I think Blobity, you'd have a, a good time with Outer Wilds. Though, 
the less you know about it, the better. Just because of how the game works. Um, I will be cautious about what I say. Um, about the game as much as I can be. In terms of, of removing value from playing it. So I won't, like, announce the conclusions that you make from the base game. But I also can't, like, promise there won't be spoilers. Hmm. But yeah, it would, it, would, it would be fun to watch you uh, try to play Outer Wilds and see how that goes. I mean, I'm sure you do well, but it, it like... It takes a while because basically it's all about your ability to draw conclusions about what you need to do and what you're supposed to do and stuff like that. Uh oh. No, no, get back in the fucking wall, you idiot. Idiot. Okay, well that's fine. Let's just delve down. Am I not able to swim down? I feel like I'm... Okay, there we go. I have to use my jets. I can't just swim. Interesting. It seems the water current is the water current is too strong to oh, okay there we go now realistically the the current shouldn't actually be able to force me away like into the wall at that point because they're not fucking flowing that direction they couldn't have a stable flow in that direction but whatever it's fine I'll allow it I guess What? Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, okay. I see. So that's how this works. That's how the flow exists. But yeah, this is 100% uh, DLC territory right now. That's not what I wanted. Okay, what is this? Let's see if there's other places these line up. It doesn't really look like it. We have this. That's great. What else do we have? Oh, this is where I came in. Okay. But yeah, 100% this game is incredible if you like challenging, thinky, nerdy puzzle games. It, like, doesn't get better than this. Okay, you know what? Let's reset the loop. Don't want to lose too much time fucking around. Oh, and thank you, I guess, uh, several of you for the, uh, for the follows. Currently, my bot has uh, follow notifications disabled. Partially because of the bot shit. Partially because Twitch changed their API and I need to redevelop it. Let's say, uh, 
Okay, let's put on our suit and immediately go to the stranger. Let's mark it and... oh shit. Oh, select is what I wanted. Okay. This is what I was actually trying to open up before. I just forgot how to do so. So there is our satellite, and here is the stranger. Nice. Really fun thing about uh, about what Outer Wilds has done is they've actually created a very, like a simplified, much smaller scale gravitational system. And you're, you're actually accelerating and moving within that system. Um, and exactly the way you should. Oh, gods, no. Okay, slow down. There we go. Also help, I've been a Celeste verifier for three days. Now you get to, uh, to verify second place to any percent runs. Well, it makes sense. It makes sense. Congratulations on, uh, on having such, such a, um, prestigious appointment. You deserve it, Blobity. So there's the dam. Ah, fuck. Okay. Let's try this again. We don't need this first one. We've I think we've gotten all of all the relevant data from here. We could try that one again. Well, you know what? Let's let's travel right up there. God, it's so cool to be able to uh, to see the whole ring world from inside. Let's go right here, but like hard right. We're gonna go like alt right over here, i.e. fucking Nazis in the United States. Also known as the standard GOP at this point. And oh, what is this way? What's over here? Wait, wait, no. Hold on. Hold on. I want to see. Yes. Fuck yes. Let's get us into this. Easy peasy. Hmm. Okay. Who? Who is this? God, the, uh, the interaction systems are so, like, intuitive. Hey, welcome back. I did manage to, uh, to get my craft into some new positions to try out some of these other buildings I haven't seen yet. Uh, what is this? Nothing exciting in and of itself. Okay, I'm gonna have trouble coming back when I go over there, so let's try this out first. Oh, shit. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, that wall's fucked. I 
can stay right here and be fine. All right, that's really not that bad. Honestly, staying in the middle of the path seems like it would have just worked. Stick around to ask them after I finish the uh, the game. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm I'm happy to answer them. Whether you... actually, if you want to ask questions about physics in particular, in the meantime, I'm happy to uh, to answer them. It really wouldn't affect my immersion. If I'm concentrating on shit, I can just tell you, hey, let me <laughs> give me a few minutes before I start thinking about that. I wonder if this is the same password as before. It is not the same password as before. Damn it. And boop. Oh yeah, absolutely. Help yourself. You have questions you want to ask about physics, bring them on. Oh good, good. So we have other artifacts here. I felt some vibration, but I don't know what it means yet. Oh, we're here. Interesting. Okay, so there was a, a channel through the rock that brought me here. Wonder if there's a uh, sort of slideshows that we can rescue from this area and bring back there. Oh, I see. So there's a whole lantern here. Whole ass lantern. Sure, let's grab it. Hmm. No. Fuck. Okay, open. There we go. Nothing. Damn it, I keep wanting there to be something hidden behind one of these partitions, but so far, nothing. Okay, still didn't quite make it through there. Hmm. Now I can get up there, so that's not like new territory. Trying to see if there's anything interesting here that I'd be able to uniquely explore with a scout. It doesn't really look like it. This building is fairly well closed off. We have a password entry here. There's suggestion that there's something behind this wall, but I can't really see what it is. And then we're back here, which is domain that we've been in previously, I think. Just to make sure. Just double check that this is exactly what I've already seen. I'm like 90% sure it is. Oh, wait, no, that's not familiar to me. Well, I got turned around. Hmm. 
Interesting. Okay. What about the other thing back here? Whoa. But yeah, I'm always happy to answer uh, questions about physics. I may, I may not always know the answer, but uh, I can certainly tell you what you're looking for very least. Okay, so we have not seen this one yet either. So these owl, horned owl people visited this solar system. This is the solar system we uh, grew up in. They watched home movies about it. And the rest is lost to time. No, more. They would capture stuff in these artifacts from the green flame. That's new. Say the ring world is paper thin and each section of the ring is an A4 sheet of paper. It's connected by infinitely strong elastic fishing line that collapsed into the star. Um, it's not that it would collapse into the star. It's that it would drift. Um, there's nothing that actually keeps the star in the middle. This is the, uh, the big part about ring worlds and stuff like that. Nothing keeps the star in the middle. It's not like a single star orbiting, orbiting the sun, right? That, that has this gravitational, um, gravitational force will keep it in an orbit. But once you actually construct a ring around, the, around a star, the net force of gravity on everything cancels out. And what ends up happening is this thing can freely drift any direction it wants. And the star is not forced to stay in the middle. That's the big problem with, uh, with stuff like that. That's where I came up. Hmm. This has the artifact labeled in its on top of the building. So I'm curious if this is where I get the charge for this flame thing. I don't know. Yeah, the, the biggest problem is that, like, we envision things, like, orbiting the star, but once you actually build a ring around it, it's not going to orbit anymore. In fact, you're kind of fucked once the, uh, the ring, or anything that you're building around a star, is, like, more than a non-trivial, uh, uh, radial angle around, around the star. The paper structure isn't rigid. Does any is, is any force conveyed across these tiny segments? If they collide. Well, so they're not going to collide. Broadly, broadly, yes, like force is going to be conveyed through matter. And so you will have this phenomenon of it drifting. Okay, how, how do I get inside? Like this. Like this, of course. Don't know why I didn't know that this was obviously going to be the answer beforehand anyway. Hmm. 
Okay, let me do that. Okay. Am I jetpack fuel? Or did I... I dropped it inside of the material. Awesome. Awesome. Is this door just open now? I thought this was closed, unless there's a door up here that I was convinced that wasn't open, maybe? No. No, this door is just open now. That's cool. Nice to not force me to go back down underneath, but, but still. Wait, wait. When did this come up? Okay, this is where I need the fucking artifact. All right. Yeah, so 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 here's the thing. You could view them, you can view a ring world as a bunch of independent segments of a ring world that are set in orbit around a star, right? I imagine that that's sort of what the inclination is. Let's view them as completely independent. You could do this. You could actually set up a whole bunch of tiny segments of a ring world orbiting a star that are independent from one another. The thing is, even infinitesimal differences in their alignment with one another means that they're going to drift relative to one another. And soon they won't be forming a continuous uh, ring world. They're going to be bumping into one another and sort of sliding out of alignment. Um, that's going to pose a problem. These forces are also going to shift it out of place. You know what? Let's restart this loop. I want to get an artifact and I want to make it inside there. So, so these segments of ring world are going to drift out of place. Um, one's maybe a millimeter farther, farther from the center of the star than another. Well, it's going to actually have a different orbital period, and it's going to start pushing up. Actually, probably pushing up against like the next segment that's trying to move past it because it has a shorter orbital period, stuff like that. What if uh, you make the sheets reflective? Would radiation pressure stabilize it? I mean, radiation pressure would exist, but it wouldn't be significant in the context of everything else. Like, it's not a lot. Um... Radiation pressure is largely negligible next to everything else um, that they'd be encountering. Um, it also wouldn't actually help move the star to the middle. Um, it would blast everything outward. You need, you need an internal force for it to actually uh, equalize. Um, there's no system that we have for stabilizing a ring world other than like having rockets of some kind we don't actually have good um energy based rocketry <laughs> right all of our rocketry is based off of fuel and there's a core component like a core reason for that that's very simple is that uh fuel the mass of the f fuel is significant it is used uh oh, fuck in Stabilization. It is used in um, acceleration, right? The reason rocketry works is that it's conservation of momentum. You're ejecting your exhaust so fast, and the the momentum that the rocket gains is equal and opposite to the momentum that the exhaust gains, and that's it. Nothing more exciting or interesting than that. Yeah. 
the effect of the drift would be negligible, uh, would be as negligible as the effect of the radiation pressure. It's not true. The neg radiation pressure wouldn't equalize your position, so it wouldn't actually help stabilize anything. It would just be another force. The, the drift is, in fact, something that is destabilizing the, um, the, the ring world, because specifically it's not stable to begin with. Right, like the, you might say, well, okay, drift is small and radiation pressure is small, so they don't matter. It's like, but the drift specifically is referring to the ways in which all of the plates aren't perfectly aligned, because they can never be. The radiation pressure is just going to be exerted on everything. And it's just going to blast things away from the star. Not in a way that's helpful. Hmm. Okay, here we go. So if I can get caught up in this... Maybe I'm not where I thought I was. Oh, no, 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 I, I am, I am. I can go this way. I can get caught up in this one again. And get the artifact. See if I can bring it out. That one place. The drift is effectively al already predefined as the difference between the uh, the ways the way the different plates are already already uh, in orbit around the star, right? Oh, no. Wouldn't be Outer Wilds without some stupid arbitrary resets that you've uh, forced yourself to do. Whatever, I might be able to recover. Well, no, I'm not going to be able to get up there. Okay, let's have a look at the ocean floor, just because. That's interesting. God, this place is so cool. Okay, how's this working? Is this just hanging out down here? Is that all... Is that all this is right now? Something triggered this to come up? I don't quite get how this is interacting with me yet. If it is at all. Maybe it's raising... Maybe something I did made it raise. I do not know. But let's go to the next loop. Yeah, the, the, the biggest thing about the gravitational force of a star, like a star exerts a tremendous amount of, of acceleration on bodies that are orbiting it. When you just have a planet, that's great. That keeps it in orbit around it and you're solid. But as soon as you actually start trying to make like a ring orbit the planet, and if the ring's components aren't touching one another, well, if they're not perfectly aligned and perfectly being outside the bounds of what can realistically be done, unless you find a, a, um, a, a dynamical fixed point, which we don't have, um, then it's unstable. Unstable things decay. Now, you can still try to fix it, right? You can attach rockets to... Uh, to the segments of a ring world and have it constantly correct itself. But you need to do that, because without that, it will eventually decay into the star. It's not even like into the star, it's just a matter of like 
it will drift in some direction because the star's gravitational force is is not keeping it in orbit. It just sort of um, drifts and will eventually slam into the star. Only because... Hold on. Ooh, here we go. It'll eventually slam into the star because it's not... Nothing is keeping it from being... Um, from drifting totally randomly. That's all you got. Like, the star might as well not be there. From the from the perspective of a uh, ring world. Or Dyson Sphere, for that matter. Dyson Spheres have exactly the same problem. Dyson Sphere is, is where you build a... Um, a ring or a, like an entire encapsulating sphere around a star filled with solar panels. You need some means of keeping it uh, adrift in the right position, because otherwise it will drift out of position. Okay, I'm thinking I want to take a look at this. Like, what are you? I've ignored you in the past. Maybe it's time. It's gonna be a little inlet on the right. Opposite the, uh, the obvious landing pad on the left. It looks like maybe I need to I need to use this landing pad on the left. There we go. Okay, is okay, yeah, there's no associated landing pad on the right. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, so the difference is, you could talk about um, dynamical fixed points, right? And they're things that are stable. If you're exactly on that point, you don't move anywhere. Um, and here, I, I, can, I can do you some, some more doodles. Where's the... Oh, here we go. Here we go. So... A really simple fixed point. If you have a well, and you have a ball sitting in the bottom of this well, it might look like this, right? There's a ball sitting in the bottom of a well. Well, if you give it a little nudge in one direction, it'll move in that direction and it'll sort of settle back where it was. This is a attractor, attractive fixed point. If, you, if it deviates from the position that it's held in, it won't actually go anywhere, right? So, you give, hold on, there we go. You give this ball a little nudge in one direction, it'll just sort of oscillate, but it's gonna stay inside that well. This is a different type of fixed point. A unstable, so, so that first one's a stable fixed point. An unstable fixed point would be a ball perched perfectly at the top of a hill, right? A ball perfectly at the top of a hill is not going anywhere unless it's nudged. But if you nudge it in any direction, it just falls in that direction. It's gone, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a simple stability diagram. So a stable fixed point is, is a ball at the bottom of a well. And once you introduce any sort of energy dissipation into your system, that actually makes it like permanently stable or unstable, right? With the, um, if there's any sort of friction, for example, a ball at the bottom of a well is not going anywhere at all. You give it a little nudge, it'll, it'll start rocking, but it'll actually dissipate the energy and it'll, it'll end up back at the bottom of the well. That 
in a manner of speaking, you can you can picture as uh, analogous to a planet orbiting the sun. You don't even need the dissipation. This doesn't generally exist. Um, a ball at the top of a hill. This is a unstable system where technically it's going to continue with doing what it's doing, but it's going to eventually collapse into something else, right? The issue with a, um, a ring world, a ring world's orbit actually is more, most analogous to this diagram here at the bottom. This one. This is what a ring world's orbit looks like around a star. You'll notice it's perfectly flat. Nothing's keeping it in one position. One position being a particular orbit. It's actually just going to drift, right? That's not great. It's going to drift. It's not going to stay um, centered the way you want it to. There's no mechanism to actually keep it centered the way you, you would want it to be. Okay. How do I get there? I've been there. That's from there. Okay, okay. I get it. It's not actually anything pertinent. What if I can get there? Fuck. No, not really. We'll reset the loop. My goal right now, get the artifact, get inside the bell, charge it up with the fire, see what happens. So, so the thing about like a, a normal planet's orbit is, is the first diagram. It's stable, right? And, and there are actually a whole bunch of different stable orbits. And if you, if you jostle the planet, it actually just moves into a different, totally stable orbit. The issue with the ring world is that it, it isn't stable. It isn't stable or unstable. It's just perfectly flat. And it, it'll drift. Nothing keeps it centered. It doesn't care if the star's in the middle, because they're all equally stable. And eventually it, it will collapse. If that makes sense. But in this case, we don't actually have this problem because the ring world appears to be a ship in and of itself. <laughs> so I think they're good indefinitely, right? Except for the fact that the ship's not like particularly big. It seems to be like, I don't know, a kilometer around? <laughs> kilometer circumference? Ever. Don't care. Get out. Oh, gods. No, just leave. Fuck. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. The ship is fine. It'll make it. It's not going to make it out of here, but it's not going to matter. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Where do we want to go? We want to go... I want to go back on the right. I want to get the artifact that way. And eventually I'll find my way to where the... Uh, the bell thing is to charge it up. Again, our my main goal of this cycle. Get an artifact. Charge it in the fire of the bell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you manage to come up with what your main objection is, feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to try to address it. The biggest thing is that force gets conducted through the body of, of whatever's orbiting it and actually cancels out the effective means of making a stable orbit. Granted, it doesn't conduct through immediately. Um, this poses some structural integrity issues for the, uh, the ring world itself. But it's enough. And um, <laughs> the... Yeah. It's enough to make it 
unstable. To remove the stability, really. If you if you suppose it's infinitely rigid, that it it just works out that the gravity completely cancels out, and there's no gravitational force on it, you can ignore any gravitational body on the inside of the ring. Period. So any any uh, momentum it has at all is just uh, preserved, and it drifts aimlessly through space as if there wasn't some giant star on the inside. Not the most helpful thing, because that's not actually what you want when you're trying to uh, to make a ring world. You don't want it ignoring the star. You want the star to be stable, but there's no way of actually uh, constructing it so that it is. Hmm. I wonder if these are like stasis pods or something. Hmm. All right. With the decay. So so it's not even... D d decay is a misleading term, right? Because it doesn't actually decay. It just drifts. When it comes to a planet orbiting a star, right, like, it's going to center around the star, but, like, this thing doesn't care where the star is. The star's, the star's effect is negligible. What's going to happen is it's just going to drift. There's going to be some small amount of velocity in one, one direction or another. Oh, shit. That's fine. We have an artifact. I don't care. It's going to be some small amount of uh, velocity one direction or another. It's just going to have... It's going to happen because you can't actually make it perfectly still. Um, and so eventually it'll collide. And that is how a, uh, a ring world would decay. Okay. So it's not like it spirals into the star. It just drifts until the star collides with it, and then it uh, becomes bad news. Come on. Interesting. Okay. This isn't... tells me, uh... nothing. Yeah. So, so really, the, the answer to your question is, like, the decay... The decay is just... Um, no net force. So this door is closed, and this one doesn't work. Once I get up here, 
it like doesn't care anymore. Oh, I see it because I can open it from this side. Then it's just open forever. I see. Does this do anything with the chains? No. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Glad it makes it makes sense now. Admittedly, it's not like a simple thing, right? It's just that all the forces cancel out, and there's no reason for it to drift in the way that it, it is expected to. What did I do before that actually caused this to raise? I did something. It was out of the water. <laughs> Certainly didn't involve grabbing these, but, uh... Hmm. Maybe it was a time-based thing? I feel like it must have been time. Obviously, don't want to just wait. Unable to pinpoint location. Nice. Ooh, uh, excuse me. One. There's actually a simple a simple name for the phenomenon. Sp spinning uh, spinning would not help. Spinning has no effect. It actually doesn't care whether it's spinning or not. Um, it's not just Gauss's law, is it? It is Gauss's law. I think... I think Gauss's law adequately explains uh, the phenomena in the context of, of gravitation. That the flux through the surface is equal to the, the point, uh, effectively determined by the point uh, sources inside the surface. Um, if you were, if you were surrounding a star with a ring world in the first place, which is usually how it's portrayed, right? You have like a ring and you have a star in the middle and this thing is like orbit, orbiting around it. Like its spin doesn't matter because it's still like, it, it is being held in this plane. So if here's, here's your ring that's orbiting the star and here's your star, it is being held in this plane to be centered because of the way the gravity works, but it does not get held uh, with the star in the center like it can just drift like this until it until the ring collides with the star and the whole thing is is fucked um. hmm But it, it's spinning actually, uh, in the end, wouldn't make any difference. Okay, I'm curious if there's anything I just, like shined my light on that had an impact. Should be extra generous in terms of uh, flashing everyone. Let's see. What 
was that sound? Oh, I get it. Okay, okay, the water is dropping. That's what I saw before. That thing broke away. That's fine. The water dropped, which is why the bell was revealed. Uh, yeah, so it still actually wouldn't make a difference. It's, it wouldn't help uh, stabilize it. What is this? What is it shining at? It's like there's two levels of water on the inside. I think that's a bug. But that's fine. They are. How did you know? <laughs> did I look in the wrong direction? <laughs> uh, I looked at the left and sandwich to the right. Yeah. Okay, good point. Good point. How's it going, Blargo? And it's funny because I've, I'm actually a expert of sorts on uh, positional audio. I've implemented the very filters that you would use to simulate positional audio. That's a simple impulse response function, but uh, still. Ooh, ooh. But that was uh, that was a solid observation. It means that my brain is good at processing either uh, interaural time differences or interaural interaural level differences. Frequently, games actually primarily use ILDs, the level difference between uh, the left and right channel, in order to indicate where sound came from. But a proper implementation would also have time difference. This time difference is actually very significant. It's, it's probably more significant to our brains than, uh, than level differences. Okay, so after a time, the level of the water just drops. Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, these burn out. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why? Well, the whole fucking dam breaks. Well, it's not going to be good for uh, anything. So interestingly, uh, with regard to rotation, Rotation actually can help simulate gravity, right? And so you may actually want that, but it's not going to actually keep the star centered. It's not going to actually help you at all keep keeping the star centered. There we go. Hey, Dom, how's it going? Hmm. As of to oh, you finished Dram? Holy crap. Everyone, if you are not already following Inky Dom, 
It's gonna take me a moment to get, to get accustomed to that, but uh, if you're not already following Inky Dom, uh, follow, like, uh, click through that link and check out uh, the new Kaizo Master who has, who has finished QQ AIDS, which is, has been recommended by Meme Lords as the quintessential means of proving your mastery of Super Mario World Kaizo ROM hacks. That's, that's awesome. Congratulations. Oh, so sorry, I think I said Dram, but obviously Storks. S is Storks, Apes, and... Storks, Storks, Apes, and Crocodiles? Stork, storks, regardless. A um, well-known ROM hack from Creator Morsel, which is just fucking bonkers. You, you sir are a legend. We appreciate you. Okay. You know what? Let's just bail. We're out of here. No! Fucking let me out! <laughs> I got out and then I was immediately sucked back into the hatch. Of course. It never works. I can never just, like, pop out. Yeah, the, my current Kaizo journey involves uh, Peachy Moat World. That's my, my current objective. And Dom is, is one of the other people using my bot right now. Appreciate you. Dumb smile. Dumb smile. Exactly. Okay. Well, I didn't get as much information as I'd hoped there. That room is accessed from the other side. I could try getting up on the dam. I don't know that I have. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. Let's book it. Yeah, I still have my, uh, my rewrites underway. Unfortunately, I've been, uh, restructuring how I work with uh, some of the the labs that I work with recently so that's involved a lot of obnoxious work but uh setting up setting up a uh, an LLC for uh, for contracting and stuff like that but uh yeah <laughs> a big a big undertaking. Okay, let's try out. Good, okay, we're on our way. I wonder what makes this dam break. Does it just break as a function of time or does something else precipitate that event? Unknown. But regardless, I'm going to coast this one right into this slot. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not what I want. Not what I want. I realized too late what it was doing. Okay, so if I hop down there, I'm just fucked. I'm down forever. I 
However, I can still use that, so maybe it's not the end of the world. So this one was star, I, flame, I flame. Cool. Video games do things like uh, place you on a planet like the- oh yeah, yeah. And it's a fucking ring world. Look at this. Look at this ring world. It's fucking nuts. This game is incredible. If you haven't played uh, Outer Wilds, you should. Okay, now we've been down there. Still don't know that language. There we go. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm actually, whoa, done with this place. Let me get over here. I want to take the, uh, Okay, I want to get on this platform here. Get back up on top of the dam and go to the right instead of the left. See what I can see. You read that book a long time ago? We were actually talking about Ringworld earlier. The star is not in the middle in this case. It's sort of like over there. It represents some of the same challenges that Ringworlds do. Okay, where does this go? Holy shit. Oh, this is, I think this is new. Right? I didn't see this before. Ah, fuck. I'll come back. Oh, this is really cool. Can I just plug shit in that I find? I wish that I could. If only. Interesting. Is it related to degree of alignment? Unknown. But yeah, Dom, have you have you played or are you familiar with Outer Wilds? This is the DLC for the game, but uh base game totally worth it if you have not uh not played it. Ooh, you should definitely check it out. Okay, let's see where this takes us. On. Down we go. Journey to the center of the ring world. Oh, no, 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 no. Anything interesting? Yes. Wait. Really? There's a fucking elevator here? This whole fucking time. There's several. My gods, I think I just learned something useful. Yeah. 
You think you saw Ios? Yes, yes. So I Ios did play it a little while ago. Definitely worth checking out. May or may not be a great stream game, depending on how much you saw when I when someone else played it. But um, worth playing regardless, I think. Um, it's just really incredible. The biggest thing is that it's driven by sort of physics-based mysteries. Things that you don't understand about how the physics works. That you well, by the way the game actually introduces you to everything. Uh-oh. To be honest, uh, falling off the, uh, the dam was a mistake. It was an accident. Let's do, uh, next loop. Now I actually know there's a shortcut on top of the dam. From the, uh, the docking port. Hmm. Actually... <laughs> I realize it's almost 2 a.m. It's probably a decent place to call it for the night. It's only been six hours, but I think now is a good time to wrap up. Let's see who's on. Who is streaming still? Boop. There we go. <sighs> but we will be back tomorrow night. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Pacific with some more Kaizo. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, Siddharth. Let's see. <laughs> ooh, ooh. That's Hamke. Doing some uh, Grand Poor World 2. Nice. Okay, let's do that. All right. So, uh, in the meantime, I will be playing some more um, Super Mario World Kaizo tomorrow night and the following. So, um, Monday and Tuesday night, uh, 8 p.m. Pacific. But then we'll be back with uh, some more cooperative uh, cooperative roguelites with my, uh, my wife, Manatees are my spirit animal. Followed by, uh, I guess, working more on the uh, Outer Wilds DLC. Isn't that the best time? <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Rick? But yeah, so we are we are wrapping up for for tonight. Um, again, I will be back um, same time. So I stream Sunday, Monday, Tuesday at eight a.m. or eight p.m. Pacific. Um, something, something, gods. Yeah, oh yeah, thank you, thank you. Let's do that. Oh gods, it's a task ready. If you don't have my emotes unlocked already, it should be a meager number of channel points to do so. Just copy and paste that once we hop in here. And uh, in the meantime, everyone have a fantastic night. I hope uh, hope hope the uh, the day treats everyone well. And that I bid everyone adieu. Boop.